Hello, <clears throat> this is Frank with Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. To see my beautiful collection of minerals and crystals, go to my website, Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals. Unfortunately, the website is still under construction and I have not added many of the beautiful, outstanding, new, and very large crystals and minerals and geodes that I have added to my collection to the website. If you want to know or invest in any of my beautiful specimens, please let me know. I essentially have every mineral from precious, semi-precious to common ornamental and dimensional stones. I am going to discuss specific types of crystalline structures of minerals and rocks. These are different from what are usually discussed as characteristics of minerals for they include more intricate and unusual patterns. So let's get to the video. If you want to leave a message, leave a message at this video or at my website Frank's Beautiful Rocks and Minerals at gmail dot com. Riser is R-E-I-S-E-R. -E -E you can invest in any of my video beautiful minerals and crystals by letting me know. And I hope you do because I love to share my love of prospecting and geology with you. And as usual with your orders, when you invest, you always get free specimens of beautiful rocks and minerals. So let's get to this discussion. This is a geode. It's about one foot high. A geode consists of a calcite or sedimentary sphere enclosure in which there is some water and a mineral that dissolves and leaves a crystalline structure over 240 million years. Geodes are hard to find of this quality. This is a clear quartz geode. Look at the beautiful perfect cleavage crystals of quartz, hexagonal, inside this beautiful geode. That's a geode. Prismatic. Here's a specimen of quartz I mined in Colorado and had touched up by lapidary. And it's beautiful. Um, <laughs> hexagonal crystal structure with termination, hexagonal termination. Um, you could say it's slightly, very slightly uh, smoky quartz. Not quite clear. And you'll notice a lot of cracks inside. And we'll discuss this. This is an example of a prismatic mineral elongated with opposite faces. Notice the faces are opposite parallel to one another. These faces are parallel. There's two characteristics of a mineral like this. One is luster, reflection of light from the exterior of the mineral. You can see the luster by the incandescent light, I mean by the fluorescent light above me on the outside of the mineral. On the inside are small little cracks. These result in sheen. Sheen is light reflection from textures inside the mineral. And if I had my powerful sun lamp in front of me or out in the sunlight, you would see something called fire. These little cracks, not inclusions, cause a breakage of the rainbow colors of the spectrum and have therefore fire.
fibrous. These two specimens are fibrous. Fibrous are aggregates of parallel or radiating slender fibers. You may call some of them acicular. Very fibrous. This is chrysotile, asbestos. It can cause cancer and is used in insulation. It's mined from Canada. Notice the pure crystals taken out of the chrysotile rock matrix are slender little fibers. Fibrous. This is another mineral. I'm not exactly sure what it is. It's also fibrous. Notice the fibers in the crystal are long and straight, parallel to each other. In a sense, striations, but not quite by definition. There you can see them. And, and, and when you rotate the matrix mineral, which, uh, which is inside of a rock, you can also see on another side the striations, the, fibr the, fi the uh, fibrous structure of this mineral inside the matrix rock. Fibrous. Foliated. Here's a specimen of biotite mica schist. It is foliated on the sides. It has overlapping flakes of biotite mica schist. Overlaying flakes. On the side you'll see the foliations characteristic of the schists. Notice how they are parallel. Notice how they are parallel. But on one side, you don't see that parallel foliation. You see the pure, the pure musk, uh, biotite mica. Very sparkly. Beautiful specimen. There's other examples of foliation. I have two here. Foliation. A visible layering within a sedimentary or metamorphic rock. This is shale. It's sedimentary. You can notice that it has, if you broke it apart, it would cleave in a sense, not really according to the word cleave, but break apart in flakes that are parallel. It's foliated. This is metamorphic. This is slate. Usually the result of parallel orientation of flat platy minerals and basal cleavage. You can see the basal cleavage planes of slate. And yes, slate does break apart in basal cleavage. Even though it's not a crystal, it's a metamorphic rock. And it comes in a variety of colors. Uh, this one is gray. Comes in uh, blue, orange, other colors. Foliation. Reticulated. Reticulated. Here's an example of a reticulated rock mineral on a matrix rock, which is granite. This is a reticulated mineral, interconnected like a lattice or trellis. Notice that. It's interconnected like a lattice or trellis. It is reticulated. This is skull site. We move on. To columnar, stout parallel clusters with a column-like appearance. You can see it in selenite. Selenite. You can also see it in a button or a small piece 
of crystalline quartz or a mineral that by definition a button in this case it's quartz columns pretty much parallel to each other stout parallel clusters with a column like appearance as in quartz that's clear quartz crystals blocky or equaint blocky or equaint roughly block like or bowl like pyrite in this case we have block light block light it's blocky or equaint pyrite Cuboidal crystal, crystal, tabular, shaped like a pad of paper, thin tabular, or a deck of playing cards, as in selenite. Notice the minerals in selenite, and you can see this also in barite, are pretty much parallel to each other and look like pads of paper that are sticking up relative to each other. Selenite, tabular tabular plumos plumos feather like sprays of fine scales similar to dendritic but with a much finer structure plumos in rocks and minerals in geology rocks crack and form a plumose structure. This is common to all rocks in geology and is a characteristic of studying them and how their physical properties are how their physical properties are affected by such cracks. The cracks are always in a plumose structure. But in minerals and crystals and rocks, you can see them. Concentric. Concentric. I have a pair of bookends here that are concentric, chalcedony, a type of quartz. Notice the concentric rings. The concentric rings of this mineral. Quartz, chalcedony. It is found in masses, showing layers around the mass and shells, working outward from the center as an agate. And you can see this in the specimen of agate. That's sliced, polished agate. Banded. This is fluorite. Banded, showing different bands of layers of color or texture. In this case, with fluorite color. Banded. It's, e it's e euhedral or anhedral fluorite. It has no cleavage. Divergent or radiating. Divergent or radiating. We can see this in this zeolite specimen. Divergent or radiating crystals in this zeolite specimen. Zeolites, by the way, are used to be ground up and used in detergents for clothes and laundry. Here's kyanite. Divergent crystals. Growing outwards from a point. You can also see it in the oak night. This is kyanite. Notice they diverge and grow outwards. Divergent or radiating. Um, 
Kyanite can also be considered dendritic or aborescent, slender divergent branch or fern-like clusters in some crystal forms. Prismatic, elongated with opposite faces parallel to one another as in tourmaline. This is tourmaline. You can see it under the light. And by the way, this is twinning multiple crystals from one main crystal. And that's rare. It makes it valuable. Micaceous. Like foliated, but splits into very thin sheets like mica. This is muscovite mica. I already showed you biotite mica. There's also other types of mica, such as fuchsite mica from the Sterling Hill Mine in New Jersey. A somewhat greenish mica. Here's another specimen of mica. Notice it's like foliated but it can split.